Welcome back. We have traveled to the continent that was most visible to us on Arianus. Looks like there's only one way we can, we can go. Northeast. Has the direction changed? Well, the ship can change orientation, so I guess that's possible and reasonable. What's outside? You stand on a barren rock under a raging storm. A cave opens into a mountain wall and a ramp rises into your ship. Well, we know the ramp. We've seen that before. We can even see the more distant continents. In the distance, I was about to say. We can look at our ship from here, can we? Wait, look at... The wooden one-man ship is shaped like a dragon, an ancient mythological beast. The gangway door is open. Right. Hmm. Ancient mythological beast. So, our dragon's not even real? They certainly hold up signs on maps. Also, this is a one-man ship? It seems very luxurious for a one-man ship. What have we got here? Zingers. Two glowing metal objects sit atop tall poles. Periodically, the storm lashes out and sends bolts of lightning against them. Instead of doing any damage, they simply cause the objects to glow brighter. Something that can harness the energy from the storm? Lexi says, that's not a dragon, Steve. That's the old bird. Um, yes, I'm sure you know better than the game in this case. Okay, so tunnel and mountains. Look at the mountains. Look at the mountains. Mountains are nice. The mountains are short, solid, and rather bare. In the closest, you see a tunnel that runs into the rock wall. Nothing new there. So we can now go southwest or northeast, and we know that southwest is into the ship, as odd as that may look from the art. Let's go in. Oh, wait. Climb the mountains? Eh, is that advisable? Let's try it. The weather here is too nasty to think about mountain climbing. Maybe you should think about getting in out of the rain. What interesting phrasing, in out of the rain. Lexi says, the game says dragons are not real, therefore that is not a dragon. You're thinking with your human brain. I suppose I could think more like a patron. But I haven't yet joined Patreon, the patron's chief social media and funding service. Not your haplo brain, right? Think with haplo. Okay, let's go into this tunnel, for goodness sake. We have made first contact... This small cavern contains a control panel, several pieces of furniture, and a female dwarf. The dwarf looks up at you in surprise. I don't blame you, miss. Oh my! You're huge! But you're not glowing. Are you a god? Okay. Um... What would be the most tactful way to proceed here? Hmm, probably not. Of course I'm a god, where are my offerings? We could be a little less cultured feeling. It's a rather unusual being, and a rather unusual greeting hello to you as well. Well, maybe. Let's be honest. I'm no god, just a traveler. A traveler? Nice to meet you. I'm Jar. You're awfully big not to be a god, but you don't act like one. They're always yelling and commanding and taking things. Gods aren't very nice. Look what they did to my electric zinger panel. Lexi says, unusual greeting is my favorite. It's a bit flirty. Well, this person seems nice. Um, we don't act like a god, huh? Excuse me a moment. They're always yelling and commanding and taking things. Gods aren't very nice. Uh, well, there aren't other patrons here. Are there Sartan? But she said something about them glowing. Look what they did to my electric zinger panel. What did they do? What did they do? They tore it apart, that's what. They tromped in here on one of their studies, ripped out one of the control switches, and removed a zinger from on top of its pole outside. Do they think that we have spares? They didn't even tell me why they did it either. Just because someone's a god doesn't mean they have to be impolite, you know. What is Electric Zinger? 
we think we know, but let's get the expert opinion. Electric zinger? What's that? The zingers are set up on the poles outside of the cave. When the lightning hits them, they suck up the electricity. I think the Kixie Winsy likes electricity or something. After the zingers have sucked up all they can hold, I pull these levers. Then the show starts. The Kixie Winsy? What's that? Why, it's the machine. How can you not know about the Kixie Winsy? It's everywhere. It digs our homes out from the earth. It makes water for us to drink and does, well, other things too. It's our responsibility to care for it so it can care for us as well. Some kind of omnipotent or at least omnipresent machine is what they call the Kixie Winsy. Lexi says, Zartrus said that elves also live in this realm. Maybe the elves have made themselves gods. That makes sense. If they'd be taller than dwarves and also humans. We're the third men trace. Um, they could be here too, and they could be gods as well, I suppose. But they need to glow, apparently. Still no explanation about what that means. It does other things too. Um, and apparently the lives of this, or at least the life of this dwarf is oriented around maintaining this machine. Glowing sounds elfy, yes, perhaps. Uh, what did she mean by show? Show? What show? The zingers go crazy. They start spinning around and shooting sparks everywhere. Most of the electricity gets sucked into the kixy winsy though, through the poles. Then my meters go back down, and I wait all over again. And they even get drinking water from this machine, so it must be important. Well, looks like we have some guests arriving. Hello, Attic, and welcome. What a wonderful game you've chosen to peek in on. Nice to see you. Hope you're doing well over there. Welcome, friends. If anyone chooses to stay and watch a little bit, you're in for a treat. And I hope you enjoyed whatever you just came from. We're doing great over here. I don't know, how do you think we're doing, Lexi? Have you enjoyed the game so far? We've just arrived here on the world of Arianus, and we have met our first resident, this dwarf. Her name is Jar. You mean, that's all you do? Sit here and pull levers? It's not that easy. You have to know the very best time to pull the levers. My family has been pulling these levers for years, and I'm the best lever puller there's been in a long time. So it really does run in their heritage to maintain this, uh, mountain-spanning machine. This is all very interesting, but can you tell me more about these gods? Well, they only showed up about a hundred years ago. They dropped from the air in a flying ship. We were curious, of course, and were prepared to greet them as friends. But a glowing figure emerged and declared itself our god. At least one of many. None of us glow, and no one had ever claimed to be a god before, so we believed it. Now they've moved in and taken control. Personally, I liked life without all this divine intervention. Video Game Addict says, LOL, what an accomplishment, lever puller. Yeah, I guess that's a more commonplace job for this race. So, more about the gods. They weren't always there. They've been there for a century. I wonder if she saw that firsthand. Do they have exceptionally long lives? They came in a flying ship. Elves are humans in a flying ship? Hard to know. They thought they were going to be friends, but the gods just took over, and apparently they had the arm strength to do it. No, it wasn't necessarily strength. The dwarves just believed them, because they glowed. But Jar isn't so sure she likes it. Lexi says, She and I are alike. I may actually be a descendant of Jar here. And also the best lever puller. I think I believe her. She might have such revelations about levers like, there's a lever, there's a lever, there's always been a lever. She would know that kind of thing. 
When it arrived, your glowing figure claimed to be a god and you bought it? Why would someone lie about that? I wouldn't claim to be a god if I wasn't. Besides, he glowed. The way they explain it, you can't glow if you're not a god. Right, makes sense. I was just uh, speculating about Jar's expertise, Lexi. I'm not sure why you reacted that way. If the figure didn't glow, would you have believed it? Probably not. If they looked like you, I would have just thought that they were big, but not gods. A few extra feet of height doesn't make you divine. If they looked like you, I would have just thought they were big, but not gods. Right, okay, so the dwarves seem to be convinced that the glowing is like the ID card of the gods. The badge that you always ask the policemen to show you before you let them in your home kind of thing. How exactly have these gods taken control? They moved into the Kixie Winsy control room and kicked everyone else out. They're always doing tests and things to it. I don't like them tinkering with the Kixie Winsy as if they didn't know how to work it. I mean, if you're a god, aren't you supposed to know all that stuff? Anyway, they've also kept us away from the north exit. That's where their ship is. They've always got a guard there to make sure, like they don't trust us. Hmm. So they guard their own ship and they just step in and mess with the machinery that the dwarves are the only experts on. A few extra lumens of light doesn't make you divine. Well, we know that. Sounds like they're not so sure. If you're so upset with the gods, why don't you just drive them off? They're gods. You don't just tell gods to go away if they get inconvenient. I might not like them, but they're ours. If they weren't gods, though, you can bet we'd have gotten rid of them long ago. Yeah, sounds like she is indeed a religious person, reluctant as she may be, to be one. Nice place you've got here. Thank you. I share it with Limbeck. <gasps> he'll want to meet you. I'm sure he'll be delighted to see a visitor. We've never had one before. I also get the impression the dwarves don't leave this continent. This is their home and they stay here and it seems like they're comfortable with it. Limbeck? I take it that he's another dwarf? Of course he's a dwarf! What else would I be sharing my quarters with? Is that his shirt hanging on the wall? Yes. He never picks up after himself. I made that hook specifically so he'd keep his clothes off of the floor, but I still have to do it for him. Does that mean you're attached? Well, yes. Someone's got to look after my limbeck. He'd fall apart without me. I got the impression that they were comfortable with each other. This room doesn't look big enough for two. Maybe not two creatures as big as you. I'll have you know that this is one of the most spacious rooms on Drevlin. We're lucky to have it. Drevlin? Is that what this place is called? You must really like this Limbeck. I'm glad that I can take care of him. He's such a gump sometimes. He gets so involved in his work that he even forgets to eat. I have to bring him in his food. That's why I keep the bread and marmalade handy. It's his favorite. That's kind of nice. She sees him as somebody that needs taking care of, even though he probably is perfectly self-sufficient. I get the impression he just has a different lifestyle. It's nice to see how they can kind of make that work. Isn't that kind of a limited diet? Well, it's what he likes, and I have to make it perfectly. If there isn't enough marmalade, he calls it dry. If there's too much, he's so messy that he gets it everywhere. That's why I can't let him make it himself. He always puts far too much on. Hmm. So he likes the perfect amount of marmalade. Does he like these gods as much as you do? He doesn't quite dislike them. He simply doesn't believe in them. He thinks that these gods have been taking advantage of us. We've been serving them when we were meant to serve the Kixie Winsy. He says that we've been oppressed. So he's an atheist. She really has an idea for this relationship, doesn't she? He just goes along with it, yes. Perhaps. I don't know. I don't know what his opinion is. Does he think that she's imposing on him? What does he do that keeps him so busy? Mostly he writes speeches. They're supposed to enlighten the masses. Oh. He keeps telling people that the gods aren't gods, that he's seen the gods when they weren't glowing. Most dwarves don't believe him. Even I have a hard time, but I support him. He's my Limbeck, after all. So they have different religious beliefs and different lifestyles, but she's still right there for him to the end. 
I don't know. As long as they get along. Can we talk about something else? All right. Hmm. Yeah. Jara's a nice person, isn't she? We've already said this, but I guess we can say it if we want to butter her up again. I've enjoyed talking with you, but I'd like to explore this kixy winsy thing. Oh, certainly. Say hello to Limbeck if you get a chance. He's just in the next room. She immediately swings her gaze back to the gauges and studies them intently, totally oblivious to you. Yeah, she knows what she's doing. And apparently she can look around in a circular fashion. Lexi says he's not going to give up a relationship with the best lever puller in generations who also makes fantastic marmalade bread. Exactly. I don't think I would. And look, there's even some marmalade right there and some bread, some loaf. We got some bread, some slice, some loaf, you name it. And a cupboard. A rusted cupboard hangs high on the wall. Perhaps that's the reason that the dwarves don't make use of it. I guess so. Maybe we could unrust it somehow. This is a point-and-click style game, after all. We have a shirt here. Can we... Oh, we can wear it? The shirt was made for someone much smaller than you. So it looks like the emulation slows down a bit when text is being rendered on the screen in certain ways. I think that's what's happening. But it does seem to recover. Can we take it? Cool. You snatch the shirt from where it hangs on the wall. That, I think, goes back out. An elbow pipe. Oh, that was the hook she was talking about. She made it specifically for him. Well, we got five points for twisting it back and forth until it pops out. So maybe it's not that bad that we took it. <laughs> take some bread and marm, obviously. Chicken marm. Okay, can we take the loaf? We can take a slice. And it's stale. Can we take the marmalade? Yep. Seems like Jar doesn't mind. And, well, let's look at the control. Let's not mess with it. The panel controls the zingers outside the cave gauges indicate how much electricity the zingers have absorbed and levers initiate the discharging process. So we might be able to tamper with it, but I don't think we're ready to do that yet. Chicken Marmajan. <laughs> Excellent. You'd have to be holding the zinger control before you can put it on the jar's room. It's so silly of me. All right, let's go. Let's go out again. We can't take one of these, can we? What happens if we click take? No, it's not happening. Placed high atop the poles, out of reach. So far, we haven't hit anything as mundane as that doesn't work, you know? Um, the thing that we just got, you'd have to be standing on the whatever before you use it with Jar's room. Was the closest, I think. Excuse me for a moment. All right. Sip of tea. Papers and parchments are piled everywhere. In the middle is an intent but confused looking dwarf. Upon your arrival, the dwarf looks up from his scribbling and gasps. Lexi says, I want to meet the man who keeps a woman like Jar tethered. I mean, she could get out any man out, out there. She does seem extraordinarily hospitable. What did I tell you about the music in this game, by the way? Isn't it wonderful? My word, what are you? Quite a smooth voice, and he looks quite studious. Look at him. Um, hmm. Well, Jar seemed to be amenable to the traveler line. So maybe we'll stick with it. I'm a simple traveler, just visiting. You, you're not a god? No, you can't be. You're not glowing. You say you're a traveler? A traveler from where? Where are you going? Do you know the gods? What do you think of the Kixie Winsy? Limbeck continues to bombard you with a rush of questions without so much as pausing to breathe. Uh, hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, 
<laughs> Lexi says, oh man, Lemmy here is pretty likable so far. Yeah, I agree. He keeps his beard nice, too. Uh, I don't think I want to play my hand that completely just yet. And that seems a bit passive-aggressive, so... And they all require a bit of an instruction. Let's get acquainted. Take a breath, Limbeck. That is your name, correct? Why, that is my name. Limbeck Bolt Tightener. You must have spoken with Jar. That's right. I'm very sorry. Sometimes my curiosity gets the better of me. Please go ahead. Ask me anything. All right. Whoa. Okay. Well, we have a lot of questions on our mind. We bombarded ourselves with a rush of questions. Okay, we could ask directly about the seal piece. Ask about the sartan. Or we could ask him about questions that are closer to home, so to speak. Let's start there. What is this place? This is one of the sacred places of the Kixie Winzy. The Broom Closet. I'm lucky enough to have this place to work. That's a nice name for a dwarven abode, I think. What exactly is the Kixie Winzy? The Kixie Winzy is everywhere. It's all around us. The humming you hear is the Kixie Winzy at work. How big is it? How big is this machine? Larger than anything. No matter where you go, the Kixie Winzy has been there first. It digs tunnels and fills them in according to its own whims. We live in the chambers that it builds. If it fills up our homes, we find somewhere new to stay. Its controls and instruments are scattered throughout the entire continent. It can just fill up a dwarf's home and it's okay? What does it do? It serves the purpose of the managers. Long ago, the managers built the Kixie Winzy and asked us to care for it. We have done so ever since. The managers? Lexi says, Jar and Limbeck are opposites, and it just works out, I guess. The studious, thoughtful Limbeck and the laborious, open Jar. Yeah. And Limbeck seems to be the messy one, too. And Jar's the one who's content to do the tidying and cleaning. In other words, you have no idea what the Kixie Winzy does. Well, no. It isn't for us to know. Our purpose is to monitor and care for the Kixie Winzy. The gods don't seem to know what it does either. Ever since they moved in, they've been running tests of all sorts on it. They've restricted everyone from the control room where they've based their tests. So he draws a clear distinction between gods and managers, but... We don't know anything about what the managers even looked like. <laughs> True as evidenced by the shirt hook she made, yes. Why isn't the Kixie Winzy their god? That's a good question. But they know that the Kixie Winzy was created by what they call the managers. And... Where are the managers? These managers, are they still around? No. The managers have been gone for many, many years. Some of the young ones don't even believe in them anymore. Only stories and legends keep the memory of the managers alive. Hmm. Let's talk about something else. Certainly. What do you want to know? Hmm. What are you writing? Speeches. I have to convince my fellow dwarves that these gods aren't what they claim. They've oppressed us for too long. We must break the chains and take back our freedom. <sighs> I'm just not very literate. I can't put my ideas down on paper very well, but I'm determined. Hmm. Why don't you ad-lib your speeches? Oh, I couldn't do that. Every idea must be perfectly worded. One misspoken word could have the opposite effect of what I'm trying to achieve. I only deliver my speeches after I'm entirely happy with them. I suppose that's commendable. Hmm. Yes. This is a dwarven man with a dwarven drive. Hmm. I've just It's just occurred to me that we have no language barrier at all. So apparently the Sartan and the patrons once spoke the same language. And all the mench races spoke the same language. And that was the last, you know crossed ways 2,000 years ago, so language has not really evolved and branched out. 
and it's not even an issue. Is it me? Maybe. I do feel slightly akin to Limbeck. Not... Not entirely. I think we have our differences. I'd like to think I'm a bit tidier. I definitely don't use a quill and ink. Though, if that was all I had available, it might well be what I used. Why don't your people believe you? I think I'm getting to them. No one is happy with the gods, but it's a different matter convincing them that the gods aren't divine at all. Language is so ancient, it's like having fingers. Aren't fingers wonderful? How are they oppressing you? They moved in, told us where to work and for how long. Our heritage tells us to care for the Kixie Winzy. Since the gods came, we haven't been able to do that. They make us use the Kixie Winzy to produce water for them. Parts of the great machine are breaking down, but unless the part has something to do with water production, we're not even allowed to look at the problem. They tell us where to live, they've broken up families, they keep us from the sacred places like the control room. If they were gods, I would assume that they had their reasons, but they aren't. They are just another race taking advantage of us. Elves and dwarves is, or not elves and dwarves, elves and humans. That hypothesis is starting to look a little bit more like what Limbeck probably suspects. And they seem interested in water. Because that's one thing the Kixie Winzy does do, and they know it. Without fingers, how would we enjoy finger sandwiches? Yes, I'm sure you're onto something there, Lexi. Hmm. One other similarity I just noticed that we have is that Limbeck seems to say water with a slight, perhaps unwitting trill in the middle of the word. I don't do it when I say that word, but I note that it does come out of me sometimes, sometimes when I don't want it to. <laughs> I wonder if they claim to be gods because they showed up and Jar was like, are you a god? That strikes me as something that Doug would say. If so, you certainly channeled him there, Lexi. Where'd you get all of these parchments? I gathered them from all over the Kixie Winzy. No one reads them. In fact, no one can. They're too old. So I write my speeches on the back of them. So there is linguistic drift, or at least drift that pertains to the written language, unless, unless they were written in a different language. But these are ancient parchments. I kind of want to look at one. Take one to Zar, maybe? Yeah, so how do you know they're not gods? What makes you so sure that the gods aren't what they claim? I've seen them without the glow. I discovered that it's artificially produced. Well, that's pretty good evidence. Especially if the dwarves believe that glow equals god. Limbeck also likes to reduce, reuse, and recycle, like he says. That's true. He's being efficient. And also, we don't know if they have another source of paper. Okay. How do they glow? It's not natural, eh? How do they make it? It's magic. According to some of the older dwarves, everyone used to be able to use magic. They've cast a spell to make themselves glow. So patrons have the ability to use magic in their blood, but they also cover themselves with runes. But apparently everyone can do it. I wonder if they use the same sort of rune system that we do. How did you learn this? When the gods arrived, they dropped from the sky in a flying ship. After they moved in, I snuck aboard the ship. I actually saw one of them, not shining at all. He was moving his hands in some intricate motion over a bunch of little statues. When he was done, the statues glowed brighter. I must have gasped, because he immediately looked over at me. I ran, and he never found me. But ever since, they've posted a guard outside the ship. So that's why there are guards. Limbeck was snooping. Intricate motion over a bunch of little statues, and then the statues glowed brighter. So are they casting some kind of voodoo glowing magic on statues? You know, voodoo doll. Doll represents a person kind of thing. 
So we've heard from Jar that they had a flying ship. What does Limbic know about it? A flying ship? Yes. One of the byproducts of the Kixie Winzy is water. For their <sighs> own reasons, they pump the water into the ship and leave with it, only to return a few days later with new gods and an empty ship. So do they have a water-powered flying ship? I mean, it's not unheard of for fantasy environments to have steam-powered ships. Maybe that's what they're doing. <laughs> oh, they're not gods, they're Californians. Yeah, maybe. Also, this conversational interface bears a slight resemblance to the Kalmop deck. They're guarding the ship now. Hmm. Ever Uh-oh. I'm sorry I did that. I'll have to read this one. I thought I could click out of the window and adjust something. Ever since my my excursion, they ever since my excursion, they placed one guard outside of their ship. Because dwarves tend to be fairly noisy, even when we're sneaking around, the guards put someone there who has very sensitive hearing. His ears can detect the slightest sound out of movement out of the caves toward the ship. Consequently, no one's gotten anywhere near it. Slight limbic. I mean, Steve, yes. I don't think my limbic voice is very good. Um, he has a great voice. It's very pleasant. So anyway, let me actually pay attention to what he said. There's a guard outside with very sensitive hearing. Hmm. And you can't get back to the ship ever since that. So, hmm. If someone's gonna get there, they need a way around that guard. Isn't that enough to convince the other dwarves that they aren't gods? I haven't told them. It might go against their beliefs to the extent that they would just stop listening to me. I simply can't risk it. The only way to convince them would be by removing the god's glow. Once my fellows have seen beyond the artificial shining, they will rise up and cast them out. Hmm. I can't figure out how to do that, though. So he thinks that the glow is the key as well. He can't just tell them because they won't believe him. Lexi says, sensitive hearing, eh? Like you might have special ears, eh? Like maybe pointed ears, eh? Like an elf, mayhaps. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, perhaps so. Let's talk about something else. Very well. Let's get back to talking about this place, shall we? Certainly. What do you want to know? Well, let's ask about the minutiae first, and we'll save the big topics for last. What is that you're using for a candlestick holder? It's all I could find. If I had a better candlestick holder, you can bet that I'd be using it. Hmm. Some of these minor details make their way into these major conversations. Uh, we'll have a look at the candlestick holder once we've finished talking with him and see what he's talking about. Lexi says it always scares me when you match my voice so perfectly. I know. I've been working on it. And I think I have your voice pretty much down. Hello, I'm Lexi. Look at me. I'm wandering the islands of Raven, don't you know? That's right. That's what you sound like. That's a mighty big jug of ink you've got there. I found that jug of fast-drying ink quite a while ago. Despite the amount of speeches I write, I've only used a small portion of the ink the jug contains. I believe it will last indefinitely. Does he think the ink reproduces itself, or does he think that he's just not going to live that long? I need to summon my go-go bot. That's, that's Lexi. <laughs> God, why do I even stream? I'll just hire you to stream for me. <laughs> exactly. Watch me rack up those followers for you, Lexi. Okay, let's get down to brass tacks here, Lemby. Ever heard of the Sartan? The Sartan? Is that a place? I'm sorry, I've never heard of it. Hmm. It's not a place, unless we're being quite poetic. I'm looking for a piece of something. It's metal, hexagonal, and has a symbol on it. It's very old. Do you know where I might find it? Hmm. I wish I could help, but I'm afraid I'm not familiar with anything like that. If it is very old, there's only one dwarf that might be able to tell you something. Old Grapple Rock Digger has been here forever. Grapple Rock Digger? Grapple Rock Digger? Do you think he'd help me find it? 
Old Gropple isn't very helpful in the best of moods. And lately, the section of the Kixie Winsy that he is responsible for has broken down. It's made him extremely sullen. He won't talk to anyone except in insults. These dwarves really do come in a range of personalities, don't they? What's being done to fix the Kixie Winsy? Normally, the Kixie Winsy automatically fixes itself. But when something breaks that isn't vital or necessary, it leaves the section unrepaired. We don't know how to fix it, and Gropple refuses to leave it. He's been sitting there for weeks. Is he stuck, or he just wants to not make progress? Do you think he could be persuaded to help me anyway? I don't think so. We tend to be a fairly stubborn people and Gropple much more than most. If he doesn't want to be moved, he won't move. If he won't talk to you, no amount of persuasion will help. What if I use my persuasion stick? Now wait, let's not go there. Besides, I'm a patron. I have other ways. Like casting heat and cold at the same time. If I told him I was a god, would he help me out? Gropple hates the gods more than anyone. Uh -huh. He remembers the days before the gods, when we worshipped the mangers. He feels that the gods displaced them. I think if you told him you were a god, he would die before he uttered one word to steer you in the right direction. Cower before me, rock digger. I am a god. Let's keep in mind that we shouldn't do that. Has he seen a manger then? It's not exactly clear how ancient they are. Hmm. But before the gods showed up, apparently they worshipped the mangers. Where can I find this rock digger? Gropple sits in the same place every day, waiting for the Kixie Winsy to be repaired. Each day he sits there, he gets more and more surly. Go north to the intersection and follow the left wall. That will take you to him. I really do enjoy how welcoming these people are. I feel like there are cultures on Earth that are like this, where you walk up and they're just like, oh, who are you? We've never had a visitor before. Come in. Let me tell you all about my life, you know? Dwarves have some religion issues. Yeah, that seems to be a hot topic for them these days. They don't have all real world issues. They seem to have a fairly simple life, but this is indeed one that they do have. How old is Gropple Rock Digger? He's been here for as long as anyone remembers, long before I was born. He'll tell you he remembers when the Kixie Winsy was built, but that was thousands of years ago. I think what he forgets, he makes up. So he is the oldest guy around, so he can probably afford to make stuff up if he wants. Especially if he's just a curmudgeon and has nothing to lose. Enough about this rock digger. Tell me more about this place. Certainly. What do you want to know? That's all. I have to go. Very well. I must get back to my speeches. Feel free to look around. Thanks, Limbeck. Lexi says, if there are people like that, I would probably back away. Right. Yeah. These are the welcoming ones, but I get the idea that this grapple rock digger is not as welcoming. Lexi says, Gropple is the oldest dwarf around and still working. What a guy. That's true. Although apparently he hasn't done any work for weeks. All right, let's take in the, sp the space. Hmm. That kind of looks like a map on the back of the parchment, doesn't it? Can we read it without taking it? You see only the back of the parchment on which Limbeck is scrawling. It has something printed on it, but you can't read it from here. Sorry, but I'm using this one. If you want to write your own speech, feel free to use any of the other papers. <laughs> if we want to write our own speech. Of course. Okay. What have we got in this place? There's the candle holder. Long pipe. The pipe sits on the corner of the deck with a lit candle stuck into it. Well, we already have a pipe, but it's an elbow pipe. Um, is this going to be like a pipe collection that we can start? A large jug sits atop a pile of papers. The jug is labeled quick drying ink. The jug is stopped by a cork. Okay, can we get the cork? Ah, that was satisfying. See, I can do your streams, Lexi. 
The cork is about the size of your fist. I wonder if we can do a cork punch. Uh, can we take it? The ink jug is far too heavy to lift. Oh, no wonder it can supply Limbeck for the rest of his life. Your estimation of Limbeck's strength increases dramatically. Yes, that's a comment on your mouth pop sounds, Lexi. Let's look at the parchments. The room is piled high with papers and parchments of various sorts. Limbeck must have gathered them, gathered them here to write his speeches on. Right. Let's read one. You grab a parchment and read through it. It's a technical jumble of unfamiliar words. When it starts to give you a headache, you toss it back in the pile. Hmm. So maybe it's like the original manual for the Kixie Winsy. And only the Manders could read it. And the ability to read it was lost. I'm trying to see if we can get our own parchment, but it looks like we can't really take them. <laughs> and we're making the music struggle by moving our cursor around and selecting so many objects. A yellow blob of wax with a wick has been jammed into a long pipe. It throws a circle of light onto the paper on which the dwarf is writing. Makes sense. This really is a nice space, isn't it? I never appreciated it enough. Okay. Well, now we've gotten to know Limbeck. Oh, what's this? Now it's just part of the desk. The metal is thoroughly dented. Let's move on. Hopefully this is the way we haven't been yet. Ah, uh, yeah. You stand in the middle of an intersection of caverns. Three choices about where to go next. This is a ready room, yes. Not this. This is like the ship's corridor. And the rocks have such a nice texture. This place has the it gives me the impression of having been built, perhaps, by the Kixie Winsy. This doesn't look like naturally occurring rock formation. Alright, which way should we go, Lexi? Left, center, or right? We've been told that Grumple Rock Digger is left. The other two directions, no idea. Finishing my tea for the evening. Let's go see him. All right, left it is. This chamber is filled with convoluted pipes. A grumpy old dwarf sits on a stool under a broken section. We know that he's grumpy just by looking at him. Should we talk to him or should we listen? Let's listen. His continuous diatribe includes such topics as how good the old days were, how, y how the young dwarves don't have the respect for the kixie winsy they should have, and other standard cranky old dwarf complaints. Hmm. So he just has a constant kind of broadcast going. He could be like the Alex Jones of dwarves. But we have no evidence to suggest yet that he's wrong about everything. Let's talk to him. What the heck do you want, you overgrown, dim-witted god wannabe? And speak up! He's already got us pegged. Exactly. How do you know what standard for dwarf? Um, hmm. Well, we can't just say that we're a traveler to Grapple Rock Digger. Let's ask for him by name. Are you Grapple Rock Digger? No, my name's not Grupal Pot Licker, you rockhead. I'm Grapple Rock Digger. Who's asking? Rockhead. Just kidding. Hmm. That's what I said, Grapple Rock Digger. Can't you hear very well? What did you say? Speak up. I can't hear very well. I said your name was Grapple Rock Digger. I know my name is Grapple Rock Digger, Dirt Rag. I told you that. My name is Haplo. Flappo? Interesting name. I wouldn't want to be saddled with it, though. Even Flappo is a better name than Grapple Rock Digger. Then it's a good thing my name isn't Apple Snotfinger. Sheesh. Don't get sucked in, Haplo. Oh, we actually can say, I'm a god, answer my questions, or suffer the consequences. 
I think we'll steer clear of that one. Never mind. Let's not worry about <laughs> names. Fine. You brought it up. Let's try to butter him up. Nice stool. There's no pool around here. What are you, blind? No, I said stool. What are you, deaf? Can't understand a word you said. New to the language, are you? <sighs> Excuse me. Uh, let's ask about what he's doing. Why are you sitting beneath that dripping black gunk? I'm not moving until the kicksy winsy is fixed, and that's final. If dripping gunk isn't going to make me move, you sure aren't. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be helping his hearing much. Could I ask you a few questions? Listen, I'm sitting under a broken pipe that's dripping black goo on my head, and the gods have commanded everyone to stay away so they can't fix the problem. And you want me to be friendly? Answer all your questions with a smile? Well, I'll tell you what, until the Kixie Winsy is fixed and those gods are gone, I'm not talking to anyone. No stories, no questions, nothing. Well, he certainly doesn't like the gods any more than Limbeck said that he did. You won't talk to me until the gods are gone? Isn't that an awful lot to ask? Who's asking you? As far as I'm concerned, you can bump your head on every tunnel ceiling you find until you realize that I'm not going to talk to you. Well, we've had him in conversation for a little while. What's wrong with the Kixie Winsy? A length of pipe has rotted away. I had to shut the main valve to keep it from spewing black gunk all over the place. So until the pipes are repaired, I can't risk reopening the valve. Why don't you fix the pipes? It's not my job to fix it. Even if it was, I'd need something to <clears throat> fix it with. I thought Limbeck said that this area was his responsibility. What about that box labeled pipe repair on the floor? Everybody's rummaged in that box taking what they want without regard for the fact that the Kixie Winsy might actually need it. At one time, there were five pipe fittings in the box. Now there's only one. Lexi says, I'm going to tell my brother he can go bump his head on every doorframe he can find. Yes. Tell, tell him that it's, uh, it's a dwarven blessing. What became of the missing <clears throat> pipe fittings? Who knows? Some folks have absolutely no consideration. They took my pipe fittings for one silly purpose or another. Did they ask my permission? Not once. Why, the gods even made off with one of them. Even if I could get those other pieces back, I'll never see that one again. Okay, so we're starting to get some insight about these pipes. There used to be five pieces, now there's only one. And the gods have one. Uh, yeah. So we can start a collection, and now it's starting to seem more likely like we should. And it looks like there might be a second one. Wait a second. What exactly are you holding in your ear? It helps me hear. It's, it's a pipe fitting. I guess I got it from the box. Yes, well, it is a pipe fitting. I just got it from the box. Yes, yes. Well, why don't we use the pipe fitting to fit onto the pipe? Tell you what, if I repair your pipe, will you tell me what I need to know? Why not? Fix my pipes and I'll answer your questions afterwards. As long as the guards are gone as well. I don't think very well with all of these walking lamps about. So, this is not a pipe. This is not a pipe. I think your last quotation of that... No. I forget why I was prompted to recall that phrase recently as well. But I did look it up. No, I think you had said this is not a pipe. Then I looked up the French title because it reminded me of that, and I didn't know whether you were making a deliberate reference. But I think you were, because I think you're that worldly. <laughs> Yes, you said it during Riven, right? I don't think the pipe helps your hearing all that much. Can I have it? Very well, as long as I have your word that you'll use it to repair my pipes. Will there be anything else? All right, we got the pipe. Hmm. Yeah. Let's continue to be diplomatic. We are an emissary, after all even if we are only a scout. Let's start over. We seem to have gotten off on the wrong foot. Have you looked at your overgrown feet lately? 
Wrong feet are all you have! Let's see. Let's ask him about the seal piece. Limbeck did say that he would know about it if anyone did. I'm looking for a seal piece, a hexagonal metal artifact with a symbol etched into it. Maybe you could tell me where I could find it. I may have seen something like that. Doesn't matter, though. You obviously want to see it for yourself, and that's impossible. As I recall, there used to be a tunnel that led where you want to go, but the Kixi Winsy filled it up a long time ago. There's no way to get there anymore. The description there says the old dwarf's eyes alight. It's clear that he loves spinning tales about his very long life and is having trouble holding his tongue. It seems like he may indeed not be making that up. There used to be a tunnel that led where I want to go, but the Kixie Windy fil the Kixie Winsy filled it up a long time ago. And now it's blocked off. Okay. This would indeed be my next question. If the Kixie Winsy filled in the tunnel, <clears throat> couldn't it just as easily dig another? <laughs> and how are you going to convince the Kixie Winsy to dig where you want it to go? The gods have been trying to control it for years, and they've gotten nowhere. Besides, I'm not going to tell you where it is until my pipes are repaired. Fact is, I've said too much already. Lexi says it's hard to find the seal piece because it's actually a sea lion piece. Lots of people get them confused, right? Um, sea lion pieces are septagonal. Mm -hmm. Maybe changing the subject would make you happier. Not likely. I didn't ask him why he was so grumpy, but that actually isn't too adversarial, I don't think. All right. Let's see if Can we can I ask him why he's so grumpy. Questions? Listen, I'm sitting under a br Yes, yes. Why are you so grumpy? Wait a second. That's a question. If you're trying to trick me, it won't work. I'm not saying anything. I think our question count is pretty high so far. Maybe changing the subject would make you happier. Not likely. This must be a bad time. I'll talk with you later. Fine. I'll just sit here under my broken pipe. You go have a nice life. Thank you, sir. We got the pipe, too. But apparently he likes keeping his hand in this position. Okay, now we have... Oh, and we got five points for the pipe. Yes. Two elbow pipes. And... A small wooden box labeled pipe repair lies on the floor. A curved pipe fitting sits inside. Take it. Now we have three. So there are five pipes. There were five pipes in the box. Now there's only one. And we have three already. And we know the candle holder is one. And we know the gods have one. So they're all accounted for. What have we here? Look at the broken pipe. A stretch of pipe is rotted away, leaving two sections that are not connected. A steady drip from one end falls right on the old dwarf's head. This doesn't improve his mood. Right. Can we fix the broken pipe with the elbow pipe? Aha! An interface. Can we just connect them like this? Okay. That sounds like the old Apple Macintosh beep. Hmm. I guess we can't rotate them. Because then the lighting would have to change. So th these are magical pipes that are always oriented to up and down. Lexi says, I loved the pipe puzzle game on older computers. And she said, and have ears, by which I think she's still referring to sea lion pieces. So it looks like we are going to need more pipe. Well, here we are at this intersection of caverns. And I think this is where we will stop for today. This has been marvelous. And I look forward to returning next session to continue searching the continent of Drevlin for the seal piece. <laughs>